Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to, to hold a talk today and, and welcome to this talk, which is about uh, the TTM conversion uh, going on in I915. Um, it's going to be an overview. It, it's not going to be down at the code level. So uh, that's really what you, you're going to have to expect. Um, yeah, and I will start with a short presentation of myself. Uh, uh, my name is Thomas Hellstrom, as mentioned, uh, and I started working with uh, open source graphics basically on our spare time in 2003 um, with the VIA Unicrom chipset. It had a quite bad driver in, in the, what was called X386 then. Uh, me and some other people fixed it up, uh, migrated to Xorg. Uh, and I did some work in sign then as well to to handle the, the accelerated video decoding and also in DRM to support the accelerated video decoding as well, not so much 3D. Mm, at uh, 2006, I joined Tungsten Graphics uh, for Mesa work, DRM work, and Xorg naturally. And Tungsten Graphics was mostly doing consulting for various vendors. Uh, we did some open source drivers. Uh, we did some closed source drivers uh, and contributed a lot to, to the DRM and Xorg infrastructure and also Mesa. Uh, Tungsten Graphics was bought in 2008 by VMware. Uh, so I joined VMware, worked there until 2020. Uh, basically with the VMware open source drivers uh, in Mesa, DRM, and Xorg, and finally joined Intel in 2020, uh, working now uh, with the GEM and core team uh, for IN 915 DRM. So the outline of my talk today, uh, since most people are quite familiar with I9, the I915 driver and what it is, uh, I'm going to mention a bit about TTM. Uh, what is TTM? And uh, above all, why is I915 adapting TTM? Um, a bit about the driver structure. Where in the driver are we introducing TTM and why are we choosing that way of, way of doing things? Um, going to mention a bit where we are today, uh, some pictures. Uh, talk a bit about what can I915 contribute back to TTM? Do we have a, a, a wish list for TTM moving forward? And finally, uh, Q&A, some uh, questions if, if there are any. So the first section here is what is TTM? Uh, it's going to talk a bit about features and history. And TTM started out at a time when DRM was um, very much different to what it is today. You had a global lock to, to, to uh, grab the hardware. Um, some drivers had memory management in a very simple way. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and, and some other utilities to map that memory from, from AGP or from VRAM. Uh, no buffer objects, no fences, nothing like that. So TTM finally, after a number of iterations, ended up with a set of utilities to manage buffer objects and their placements in a way that the GPU could uh, bind them uh, and the CPU could map them. And it's all, all assumed that everything was done coherently. Uh, and actually, it was originally developed to support dynamic AGP binding. Uh, at that time, reading out from AGP was very slow, and I guess it still is. Uh, so the idea was that if we take the buffer object out of AGP, uh, read from it, uh, we could do that in a much faster way uh, with, with uh, CPU caching and, and prefetching. Uh, that turned out not working so well as we originally thought because of caching issues. But anyway, that, that's really how TTM started. Um, and VRAM management was actually added as an afterthought. Uh, we concluded that, okay, some, some cards or some GPUs need VRAM support, so we added that as well. And uh, some, of, of course, uh, utilities to be able to copy from VRAM to AGP and back and forth, and also to system. Uh, but the set of utilities that we have today 
they handle what I would like to call a hybrid trial of eviction or hybrid trial of evictions, which means that uh, if we need to evict something to have place for other things, uh, we need to lock that thing, we need to evict using Trilock. Um, and if we totally run out of objects to evict, we can do some waiting, simulating something that would look like a waiting lock and then retry. Um, uh, we have command submission with uh, wound weight locking uh, and various options to select memory caching of the pages we allocate. And there also are some, some utilities for asynchronous uh, evictions, which help speed up things uh, during evictions. Uh, and TTM also actually pioneered, as I mentioned before, a lot of DRM components and functionality that Linux GPU drivers use today, but they aren't necessarily anymore in TTM, uh, but they have been moved out to two separate components. For example, buffer objects, uh, the main component for that today is gem. Uh, we had uh, initially some, some variant of the deadlock free weight die locking, which is very similar to wound weight locking, um, and also fine grained locking uh, around LRU lists, which wasn't the case uh, for most GPU drivers at that time. They were using the big kernel lock or struct mutex. Um, and uh, the weight die locking was then abstracted out to the WW mutexes that we have in the kernel today. Um, we have uh, we had persistent memory mappings also at that time, which meant that you can evict a buffer object while user space maintains and, and still holds on to uh, what it thinks at least is a, is a persistent CPU mapping. Synchronization objects that later became the DMA fences and also asynchronous, asynchronous migration. Unfortunately, TTM in the state today is getting old. Uh, the code is badly documented and some design decisions aren't really what they should have been. Uh, so that's the, the sort of main drawback. But TTM has seen a lot of additions and cleanups over the years, uh, mainly Red Hat, AMD, I think Oracle has done some stuff and VMware as well. Uh, and it's currently maintained by Christian Koenig, AMD, who is doing a lot of cleanups to the code. So uh, the big question here, why is Intel adapting TTM, uh, except because that we are starting to, to ship discrete graphics? Well, uh, as background, i915 was originally implementing its own VRAM or in the i915 nomenclature, uh, local memory or LMEM management uh, on top of the code for integrated. And that worked quite well, actually. Um, and except for asynchronous migration, uh, it supported mostly everything that uh, TTM supports today. Um, but on the other hand, we were diverging from DRM where most of, if not all, VRAM-capable drivers use TTM. Uh, there was some actually considerable upstream pressure to, to see if we couldn't adapt TTM instead of reinventing the wheel, doing something Intel-specific. Um, and it simplifies many things, like implementing asynchronous VRAM management and eviction. And it's also well-tested, uh, basically, because if, if somebody uh, screws up, then most drivers using TTM uh, gets uh, um, get, get get some some kind of failure, uh, whereas yeah, it, it's it's not restricted to a single driver. Um, it gives us a chance, also of course, to contribute back and take advantage of the upstream development. And uh, a bit of a curiosity here is that i915 was actually once the main target driver for TTM uh, before going and choosing uh, GEM path instead. So looking at the driver, uh, where do we introduce TTM and why do we choose to do it that way? And yeah, the, this diagram is a bit odd here because I quite soon realized that I was hiding the TTM glue bullet here with, with my picture. So I had to, <laughs> had to redo it a bit. But anyway, um, we have uh, the UAPI, which mostly uh, is connected to the gem. 
component here. Um, we have the core component, which is mostly driver loading, unloading, suspend, resume, stuff like that. Some, uh, some uh, utilities for uh, command submission and, and other things. And the GT component, which mostly talks to the hardware. Now the jump component has a number of backends depending on from where we want to allocate pages. We have the FIS backend, which is uh, DMA mapped memory, which is allocated during the uh, allocated using the DMA API. Uh, we have the DMA buff backend, uh, which imports buffers from other drivers or, or from other instances of our own driver and exports them. Um, and we have the system backend, which actually takes pages from shared memory objects uh, and hands them to, to the gem component. Uh, and we choose here to, to hook up TTM as a backend, uh, as a TTM backend to allocate uh, LMEM or VRAM pages. Uh, and for discrete, we actually use this for also for the system pages. So the question remains here now, why, why we, we, did we choose uh, to do it this way? Why didn't we just say, OK, we replaced GEM with TTM? Uh, and the short answer is uh, actually we had, there's two short answers. One, one of them is that we have uh, discrete, uh, sorry, uh, integrated uh, GPUs as well that still will need to use the, the system backend uh, before porting that over to TTM if that's going to happen. Uh, the other answer is that we have some code or quite quite a lot of code in development that uses interfaces from within the gem component that we might break uh, by doing a very invasive uh, TTM changeover. So, so this was the part chosen. What we will end up with perhaps in the future uh, is something looking like this, uh, the UAPI talking more or less directly to the TTM Glow which in turn uses the core code and, and GT code uh, for, for communications with the hardware. Uh, we have done some important UAPI changes for discrete GPUs. Um, first of all, CPU maps will use the TTM provided address space offset uh, when mapping buffer objects instead of requesting its own based on the caching that user space wants. And this also means that user space has, has to live with the caching mode uh, that the kernel driver selects for it. And that in turn depends on whether or not we're choosing to allow LMM in the placements or just system memory. Um, and user space gets to choose the memory region placements of a gem object. They can choose to allow it only in system, only in VRAM or LMM. Uh, or it can can actually give a set of, of any memory regions where, where the user space object is allowed to be placed. Um, some ioptals are gone. For example, uh, set caching is completely gone. Set domain is mostly gone. It's used by some user space drivers or user space components to wait for GPU rendering. So that functionality still remains. Um, Relocations are gone, uh, and we also had see, have seen a bunch of other UAPI cleanups by JSON Xtrand that's happened also simultaneously in Mesa uh, to remove a lot of unneeded functionality. Uh, and I also often get the question, is GEM or TTM the fastest choice? Uh, and I would like to say that it's, it's not really a matter of TTM or GEM in, in any way. Uh, there are other much more Im important factors at play. Um, for example, caching, uh, reading out from a cached buffer isn't the fastest way of doing things. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, an uncached buffer isn't the fastest way of doing things. Uh, and I mean, if, if some user space ends up doing that because of the change caching mode for TTM, that's something we need to fix. And that, that will, of course, make TTM look slower. Um, Page allocation is another thing. Uh, for example, allocating pages using shared memory objects is quite slow compared to using the alloc pages API in the kernel, which TTM uses. Uh, and synchronous weights is something we, we would like to avoid as well during command submission and other things. 
uh, and TTM provides a very good way to avoid those, um, which you, of course, also can implement in the, in the GEM framework if needed. Um, so uh, as an answer to, to the questions raised earlier here, it's, it's not really about GEM or TTM, it's about other things. Um, so where are we today? Um, yeah, I have a little video here of, of the most recent development. This is this is a DG1 system. Um, yeah, it, it's not really anything interesting, and it's better viewed, I guess, from the link in the uh, presentation material. What we're doing here is starting up uh, two instances of the Valley Frame uh, of the Valley Benchmark, um, and also a super tax card, suspending, resuming. Uh, and things look okay and, and with decent or at least reasonable frame rates. Um, so, yeah, that, that sort of answers a bit the questions where we are today. Uh, we um, let's see here. Um, DRM tip for i915 for GG1 is, uh, yeah, I would say fully functional except suspend resume, which is under review. Um, we have some locking cleanups in the pipe. Uh, and we also have TTM shared memory support plus shrinking uh, in the pipe, also out for review. Uh, and that is uh, a way to avoid uh, the watermark swapping in TTM today and instead use the kernel shrinkers for that. Uh, I know that AMD and, and Christian Koenig is doing some work to have TTM support that natively. Uh, meanwhile, we sort of start out with supporting that with shared memory in our driver today. Uh, we have fully fail-safe asynchronous migration and eviction uh, also in, in the pipe, also out for review, and it's being worked on. Uh, DG1 support is in Mesa, Maine, uh, and as you can see, it works reasonable, uh, reasonably. Uh, desktop and games are working. Uh, there are still some occasional crashes being looked at. Uh, and X Wayland isn't working very well at the moment. That's also something we need to look at. Um, we need to fix up CI tests for UAPI modifications, of course. Um, a lot of the DG1 CI has been very red for quite some time. That's mostly due to the UAPI modifications. Uh, we're fixing that up so as, as fast as we can. Uh, but uh, when even when that's done, we need some more CI test coverage for for the new functionality added, uh, and also that would be able to cover more of, of the TTM module itself. So another question that I get uh, a lot is, what about TTM for integrated? Uh, and we haven't really fully decided on that yet. Uh, in its simplest form. It's a matter of pointing also integrated to the TTM uh, GEM backend rather than the GEM shared memory and FISH backends. Uh, and particularly after the work being done by, by Matthew Old now um, uh, with shared memory being supported by TTM, this would be something quite easy that, that could quite easily be, be enabled. Um, but one thing with the integrated support in, in uh, the GEM component today in i915 is that it uses CPU maps with conflicting caching, uh, which means that it's basically tied to, to Intel processors, of course, uh, because it uses some functionality that is not guaranteed by other processors. Uh, and question is really here, can we support that with TTM in a way that looks okay to both TTM maintainers and, and to, to us going forward maintaining the i915 driver. And one way is to, to lie to TTM and say, okay, we, we're only using the objects as, uh, as uh, kernel objects and TTM doesn't have to care about the CPU mapping to user space, uh, but behind TTM's back, we do that ourselves. Um, but that's not very pretty, but it's a way to go. So the answer to the question, uh, are we going to support TTM for integrated? Uh, I guess that's wait, we, we'll have to wait and see here a bit. So uh, another big question, how can we contribute back to TTM? Uh, well, CI and bug fixes is, is one way. 
if somebody breaks GTM, they would also break uh, DG1 CI at the moment, at least in, in the parts that we're using. Uh, bug fixes, of course, uh, as we port things over, we discover bugs or CI discovers bugs. Um, we'll add more reviewers and developers and this, uh, yeah, reviewers and developers that are sort of familiar with the TTM. Uh, hopefully that contributes to more valuable discussions on DRI develop. And code wise, we have a body VRAM or LMM allocator. Uh, that's been ported to a TTM resource manager, which means that it's uh, sort of reusable for any driver wanting to use that functionality. Uh, as for the future, wish list from i915 to TTM is uh, something that we actually worked on a bit ourselves, or at least started some, some prototyping. And that is full wound weight cross device locking during eviction. The cross devices is, is sort of optional to begin with. But anyway, that was something we had in the i915 driver before the TTM port, and that we would like to have the TTM port support as well. That means basically we don't try lock when we evict, we uh, do a full waiting lock if, if that's uh, really. Uh, if, the, if that's something that, that we would like to do because we think it will succeed. Um, we would like to have kernel shrinking rather than watermark swap out. Uh, and that's a bit complicated in TTM because to be able to do that, you need the data in a shared memory object. Uh, and data that's in uh, uncached system pages or even in, in DMA allocated memory needs to be copied. And that happens during the shrinking itself uh, quite quite late, so, so that's really a problem. But I think AMD is working on this, uh, and hopefully we, we can get that sorted out, perhaps with some Intel help as well. So that leaves us, I guess, to the Q&A. Uh, I guess the, the presentation is done. Jason Extrant asks, uh, regarding TTM and the maps, MESA no longer switches mapping types, even unintegrated. Switching would break all the MESA, but be fine for now. Uh, so can, can you repeat the question there? Uh, maybe it's not a question, it's just more like a note from Jason okay. Extrant. Okay. Okay. Understood. Uh, and Huang Rui asks, have you encountered the performance problems while the TTM is always doing the eviction at the backend? If yes, how do you handle this? Uh, I don't think we have any eviction performance problem uh, as, as far as we can tell, uh, rather uh, on the contrary, actually, because of the asynchronous eviction. Okay, it looks like we won't have any more questions for today. So thank you very much for the talk and please do visit the IRC channel in case someone... Do oh no, we have one question from Bas Nguyenhuizen. How okay. are you dealing with the out of memory killer on TTM compared to the old path? Uh, that's something uh, that we really uh, we, ha we haven't really tested that and and compared yet. Uh, I guess that will be a, a question that we will be more able to answer in the future. Okay, and that's all we have for today, I believe. So thank you very much for the talk once again and thank, and have a great rest of the conference. Okay, thank you very much.